शाम के कोहरे में बहता हुआ खामोश नदी का चेहरा गंदगी कोहरे में जलते हुए आंखों के चरा एक लगातार सुलगता हुआ सिगरेट का धुआं नींद में डूबी हुई दूर की मध्यम आवाज अजनबी खाबों के उड़ते हुए सायों के तले नक्श चेहरे की पिघलती हुई मूंग की मानंद हर नए खाब की धुन सुन के बदल जाते हैं ऐसा लगता है न सोएगा न जागेगा न बोलेगा कभी शाम के कोहरे में बहता हुआ खामोश नदी का चेहरा The year was 1909. The place, Shuapur. The ancestral zamindari in Bangladesh, then East Bengal. The couple, Hem Chandra and Kiran Moy. The sixth of their eight children was a boy who was named Bimal. Quiet, shy, and introverted, the young Bimal Roy had always given glimpses of the future that was to follow. He used to sketch a lot and also play the violin. During Durga Puja, he used to take part in amateur plays, at times playing the female lead role to perfection. Perhaps the start of the saga would be the day when his elder brother Chudhi Chandra gifted him a camera. He would spend long hours perfecting his newfound passion, a talent that would stand him in good stead in years to come. Much like his movies, his life took an unexpected turn in 1930. His father Hem Chandra passed away, and almost immediately, the estate manager took control of the zamindari. The family was evicted overnight. Bimal took charge of his two younger brothers and mother, and migrated to Calcutta. The separation left a very deep sense of loss, a feeling that he best portrayed through his film Do Bigha Zameen. In Calcutta, Roy rented a house close to the Tollygun Studios. For days, he struggled in search of work. He often walked over 25 miles to the DG Studio at Dumdum in search of a break. His mastery over the still camera helped him start Studio Loose. Leading stars like Kanan Devi believed that when it came to portrait portfolios. only roy had the magical touch to make women look truly beautiful his formidable reputation as a photographer gave him his first break with the eminent filmmaker pramathesh borua as a still photographer thereafter roy through his silent dedication earned the confidence of the eminent cameraman nitin bosh who took him on as an assistant and soon he was behind the camera as an independent cameraman The title of Ace Cameraman came with his evocative black and white works in Borua's Mukti Devdas Maya. In 1937, Roy married Mona Bina, a woman of substance who perhaps influenced the director's depiction of women in his films like Sujata and Bandini. Roy's directorial debut started with New Theatre's modest Bengali film aptly called Udaya Pothe the road to awakening the cast was new the raw stock was leftovers from other films the preview received mixed reactions but after release it turned out to be new theaters biggest ever box office hit so much so that the film was remade in hindi as hamrahi with the same cast in the words of shatijit ray udaya pothe was able to sweep aside the cobwebs of old tradition and introduce a realism and subtlety that was wholly suited to the cinema by 1948 the partition and the vicious rostock license policy left the bengal film industry in doldrums <laughs> childhood friend hitan choudhry invited him to bombay to make ma for bombay talkies within 2 years roy launched his own banner bimal roy productions 
He had the able assistance of a talented pool of technicians who had migrated with him from Calcutta. In 1953, Dobig Hazami established Roy as a neorealist trendsetter. With this, Roy started his forays into international film festivals and won rich accolades from Khan, Carlo Vivare, to name a few. To date, Dobi Ghazamin remains a landmark in Indian cinema and a textbook for all aspiring filmmakers. Roy left a rich legacy of celluloid classics such as Devdas, Parinita, Sujata, Madhumati, Bandini. Films that stood for clean, socially relevant entertainment. And in the awards tally, Roy backed many Indian awards and the coveted Filmfare Trophy a record number of 11 times. Roy remained to the very end a quiet, shy man who stayed away from the world of glamour. He saw happiness and contentment in the simple things in life. But when he died at the age of 57, he left behind an audience that was asking for more. Bimal Roy, the man of silence, left behind a void that hasn't been filled even after 30 long years. Uh, Farooq and Diksha, thank you very much for inviting me to take this masterclass. But I have to admit at the start that you know, masterclass on my father for one hour would be like <laughs> poetic injustice. But there's so much to talk about him, not just as a filmmaker. I mean, he's made some of the most magnificent films which refuse to uh, fade away, which keep coming back into our mainstream consciousness, particularly mine. So, but I will try my best. And I would like to begin by at the beginning, which is when my father, uh, you know, he was hardly 19 when he was shunted out of his uh, estate. And he landed in Calcutta, which was the closest city to the village they were in called Shuapu, which you saw in the film, which the audio was rather bad, but I mean, I I'm sh hope, you know, I can talk about that later. And uh, in his journey, he was spotted by Badua, who was the most important filmmaker of that era, Pramothesh Badua, who made, as uh, we have already said in the AV, films like Mukti and Devdas, I mean, he was a prince from uh, Gauripur in Assam, but he was making films in th new theaters. And uh, guess what? He picked up my father and uh, my father's camera work in this particular film called Mukti made him into a star photographer. I doubt if anyone has ever enjoyed that status of being a star photographer. When I say star photographer, his name was on billboards with the actually with the stars people went to see mukti again and again to watch the camera work i mean this is the kind of cinematography my father had brought into uh, in an era where only black and white films were being made and he was a master at craftsman uh, i mean par excellence i can go on talking about it but i would say that this was the start of the man who later ma uh, you know made a film called uday pathe very apt name. Udaya Pathe means towards awakening. And what a film was Udaya Pathe. Uh, yes, this is the film called Udaya Pathe, which was a very, uh, I would say, a very indifferently produced film by new theaters. It had, did not have any stars. Uh, all newcomers, including my father, it was his debut film. But when the fil film was released for three days, the film struggled to survive. And when it survived, wow, it could not be taken off the screen for one whole year. Till date, it remains New Theatre's most successful film, which made 60 lakhs in 1944. 60 lakhs in 1944. That's a record. 
And it was such a hit that it was remade, completely reshot in Hamrahi. Unfortunately, not a single frame of Hamrahi survives. Uh, it's, we've lost it to fire. There was a big fire which gutted a lot of new theaters films. And those were combustible films, you know, celluloid was combustible. Now today it's a different matter. So that's a tragedy. So, uh, you know, and I would say, uh, just quote two people on Udhar Pathe, uh, Ritwik Ghatak, who was also one of the most outstanding cinematographers, uh, filmmakers of India, and also my father's assistant, uh, said to me that, you know, with Udhar Pathe, Bimalda literally pulled out Bengali cinema from the abyss. Pulled out, he used the word pulled out. And Udhar Pathe is the film which inspired the future Satyajit Rai, future Mrinal Sen, future Ritwik Ghatak, future Tapan Sina. It was the most inspiring film. People had never seen, you know, acting which was so natural. And in fact, Satyajit Rai said that, you know, with this film, Bimal Roy swept away the cobwebs of theatrical acting and brought in a style which was wholly suited to cinema. He was undoubtedly a pioneer. I completely believe that he was a pioneer. And, uh, you know, and then unfortunately, uh, uh, Suresh, we can have the still of my father's whole in unit. Uh, okay, fine, uh, this one, yeah. You know, he had to leave. This, is, this uh, was shot with his entire unit where most people have unfortunately passed on. My father was there and uh, his cameraman, his, my mother, we are also there in this. This was shot in, uh, the, uh, in the hills where my father was shooting his second film called Anjangar. Uh, sadly, that film too has suffered, but there are, I think, it's there in bits and pieces in the National Archive. Uh, he had to move on to Bombay because, you know, there was no way he could survive in Calcutta the Bengali film industry had completely, you know, bogged down. So he came to Bombay at the invitation of his friend Hiten Choudhury, which the audiovisual mentioned. And uh, first he made a film called Ma. Uh, Suresh, can we have this slide of Ma? Yes. He made, this is a, a still I picked up from Russia. Uh, this is uh, uh, Leela Chitnis, the great heroine of Bombay Talkies. And she was portrayed like this. In Ma, it was a, a tragedy about the elder, about the elderly. You see, my father's social responsibility made him, uh, you know, select stories which had deep sensibility about the, you know, about humanity, about our society. And I mean, as early as 1952, he made a film called Ma, where the the elder abuse was completely portrayed in a very, very tragic manner. So this is Ma. And then he, after making Ma, he was all set to go back to Calcutta. He didn't, actually, he was truly a Bengali. He just didn't want to be separated from his own uh, culture, from his own, uh, you know, uh, choice of work. He, I mean, he, he, you know, it might sound incredible. My father directed Hindi films without knowing a word of Hindi. He did not direct any actor. He couldn't speak Hindi. Uh, he had kept somebody who knew who was bilingual. But guess what? Uh, after seeing uh, Dushika's Bicycle Thief, uh, the neorealist cinema from Italy, my father was so moved that he founded his own uh, production house called Bimal Roy Productions. And the logo was the Rajabai clock tower of the University of Bombay. Now, this is very significant. You know, when I talk of my father's social responsibility, uh, I am also, you know, I would like to mention that using the logo of a university tower in, you know, in a world of glamour and glitz was unthinkable. I mean, you know, this is where the man's vision is very clear. And this is where, you know, he established himself and there was absolutely no looking back. So when he was making Dobi Gazamin in Bombay, that was the first, yes, that was the first, uh, you know, film of Pimandra Productions. If I, if I have to take one film and mention the merits, <clears throat> I can go on for two hours about Dobi Gazamin. Dobi Gazamin 
was the first neorealist, it has been recognized as the first neorealist film of India. It is considered one of the 10 best films of all times. Uh, immediately after the because I mean Filmfare Awards was created and there were five awards, Filmfare Awards to start with, of which my father took away two for direction and film. Dilip Kumar got for best actor, Dilip Meena Kumari for best actress and music was by Noshad Sao. Uh, the film was shown, this is in Khan, my father with the great uh, French critic, George Sadul, who is, uh, you know, who had invited my father. Uh, Dobe Gizamin also was the official entry, Indian entry to Khan Festival, and it came away with a mention, a very big mention called International Prix. I don't know, I mean, I can't pronounce French very well. Uh, what else? I mean, I've taken a whole note on, uh, you know, uh, uh, it introduced um, the actor who just passed away last year called Jagdeep uh, as a child star. Uh, it also introduced uh, Salil Choudhury, who was the writer of Dove Gazamin and who also gave the music. And these are the two awards my father got for Dove Gazamin uh, very early, you know, on, and that was the first. And as the uh, audiovisual uh, claim, my father's record of uh, uh, winning awards was unbroken for 30 years. He was the, he got 11 awards as a director, uh, producer uh, for only for Dovi Gazamin, but as a director, he got 11 awards, which is uh, truly incredible, I would say. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on about Dovi Gazamin there. I mean, it, it was, uh, I mean, Oh, yeah, it, I have to mention that it was the first Indian film to be released in Metro Cinema, which had a co colonial uh, this thing uh, hold. They did not, they were so snobbish, they didn't allow any Hindi films or any language films to be shown. I, and uh, Dobe Gizabin was the first film to be shown in my book. Uh, uh, Lord Meghna Desai writes about, talks about the experience of watching Do, uh, Dobe Gizabin at Metro uh, in Bombay. It was released in Metro in Calcutta. So that was also another achievement of uh, Dobe Gazamin. Uh, so that's about Dobe Gazamin. And Parinita again is a film very close to my life, uh, this thing, because here is my father directing the beautiful Meena Kumari in Parinita. She played Lalita. It's a lovely, lovely love story. And I was on the set every day. So I can say that, you know, I've seen the film from very close quarters. I am also in the film, song sequences, uh, Gore Gore Hatome. Uh, this is also my father directing uh, Ashok Kumar uh, on the sets of Parinita. Parinita was Ashok Kumar's first production. And that really secured my father in Bombay. The success of Par box office success wise, though because I mean, was not, you know, it didn't have the kind of, uh, you know, it didn't have the kind of romantic appeal which uh, Parinita had. Parinita was absolutely, it just blew up all the records of box office. It ran and it, I think Parinita, for Parinita again, uh, Meena Kumari got an award for the best actress. My father got for the best uh, director. Uh, so I've seen this film very, very closely. And I'm proud to say that my father was shooting Parinita during that day and though because I mean at night, he was a very slow worker as far as uh, you know, direction goes, but he made it, I mean, it, it was a, a hat trick, I would say, you know? making two films on, on the same day. And I've heard this from Rishikesh Mukherjee, who also was uh, my father's editor and an assistant. Uh, Suresh, we could have the shot of the Nishida and all of them. Yeah, my father brought from Calcutta four of his very eminent uh, assistants. One was Rishikesh Mukherjee. Then there was Nabindu Ghosh who remained his script writer who was an eminent novelist uh, in his own right. And he brought uh, Ashit Sen, whom you must have seen as a comedian in many films who was fat, but he was my father's assistant from day one. And he also brought Mr. Paul Mahendra who was the bilingual link to my father because my father didn't speak Hindi. These four people came uh, with us when we came by, shifted to Bombay in 1952. And they remained here. And Rishikesh Mukherjee 
the other thing which i would like to say is my many of my father's assistants uh, got break as directors to start with rishikesh mukherjee mani bhattacharya who made uh, mujhe jeene do uh, nabeedu ghosh who made a film very late in his life and uh, the next uh, shot is of uh, kabuliwala which was again a bimore productions production directed by my father's very very dear friend called himen gupta who was already in bombay and who had made anand mat for pakistan this is my father showing uh, uh, balra chahani uh, shot and uh, uh, so you know most of them got a chance to make their own films their own statements all each of each of his i mean uh, to end with gulzar my husband basu bhattacharya was also a dear, assistant of uh, my father they have all had their independent and very good you know established uh, careers as filmographers uh, and uh, uh, i mean the other contribution of my father i keep being surprised almost every day the way my father had helped people behind the scene is incredible i didn't know that my father packed up his shooting of a film called benazir which was on production to help k asif uh light the set of the film which is a very well known film a uh, more uh, this thing called kya kya to darna kya asif saab had problem lighting this and my father was incredible with his lighting he summoned my father and uh, k asif studio and mohan studio were next to each other so my father just packed up his shooting he went there and all this has come out recently in a autobiography by a very uh, eminent bengali director called tarun mazumdar i mean we didn't even know the way he helped people he helped not just by giving them i mean giving a chance uh, you know you if you're talented if you are you know somebody spots your talent that's another matter but going out of his way to help the youngsters i mean it came second nature to him this is what i'm saying is that the way he reached out uh, with his you know his compassion and his humanity that uh, of course i've seen as his daughter but you know even as a filmmaker he did that and uh, i would say very proudly uh, and uh, also the other thing which i would say is my father has been accepted the world over unfortunately because he was not media friendly as i was telling farooq a little while back uh, he was rather media unfriendly uh, the media was not given a chance to promote him and yet this beautiful shot of my father clapping was taken in moscow when he behind him is salil choudhury the first indian delegation film delegation which was invited to moscow my father went there uh, he showed the bigger zameen if raj kapoor's avara is musically the best loved work of india in in the 50s the bigger zameen was morally the most respected film of soviet union and the entire uh, you know the, the western world and uh, he never turned back you know it is i mean i've had chinese delegations coming and singing dobiga zamin songs to me in chinese there are versions of dobiga uh, zamin songs in in uh, russian so i mean you have no idea what a sweep it had made and there were no stars there was no romance it was a very tough story even today when you talk of this suicide committed by indian farmers you cannot go past dobigas and that film is such a dark film coming out and people when it was released in uh, london in 1955 people the critics the english critics commented why should such a dark film come out from a new republic like india new uh, you know we had just got our independence so you know this is the story of my father and feel free uh, i think uh, suresh has to show to yeah this is also in moscow you can uh, see a lot of my father's film this was the first film delegation you can see raj kapoor you can see nargis nirupa roy salil choudhury rishikesh mukherjee radhu karmakar who was the cameraman who was right in front of the uh, raj kapoor and my father uh, and he was lauded in moscow i think the best prints of my father's films are still in the you know the russian uh, archive
Okay, this is one film which is very unlike my father, which is a film called Madhumati, which <clears throat> everybody said it was completely beneath the dignity of Bimal Roy. People panned it, but I mean, once the film starts, you just cannot move from the, you know, from the screen. And uh, he, here my father sh showing a step to uh, his heroine, uh, Vajinti Mala. I happened to have been there for this location shooting. This was shot in Igatpuri near the Wilson Dams. When my father discovered that a lot of the film had got corroded because of bad uh, quality of cinema. And he had shot it uh, in uh, Ghodakhal, which is uh, where there was no technical this thing at all available. So he had to reshoot the sequence. And the other thing which I would very much like to point out, I think it might you know, uh, amuse you to know, uh, Shashi Kapoor, uh, who had acted in my father, and he was very, my father was very fond of Shashi. He, he told me, he said, you know, Bimalda never showed us acting. Uh, Suresh, can we sh show that lovely still of Moti Motilal? No, the Motilal and my, yeah. My father, yes, true, my father did not show acting. He didn't act out his characters, but he saw to it that his stars and his actors would come out very, very authentically in their characters. This is my father showing the, you know, the outstanding actor Motilal, who's not really been valued in, uh, you know, in the history of cinema, uh, dressing up as Chuni Lal in Devdas. And uh, this is what Shashi meant. Shashi said, you know, Raj Kapoor used to show all his stars how to act. But Bimalda, I don't know, he just inspired us. He was just being there. And this is what he did. And he would do this uh, for all his stars. You know, he would not just go there and give them a little tip. That's it, you know. Okay, stop here. And I, I mean, this I've heard from, even from Nutan, whose uh, piece I've got in my book. You know, she also said that Dada never showed us how to act. And of course, this uh, Bandini, unfortunately, uh, was my father's last film. He passed away soon after that. This was 1963. Um, yes, the other thing which I have to mention is my father introduced a lot of stars, iconic stars for the Indian cinema. One was Meena Kumari. She was selected for uh, Parinita. Uh, then he selected uh, Dharminder. He signed Dharminder for Bandini uh, with the check of 100 rupees. And Dharminder settled down as one of the biggest stars in Indian cinema. Uh, he also uh, discovered this lovely actor called Jagdeep. And I think Sunil Dutt also, one of his best roles was in uh, Sujata. Sunil Dutt. A lot of people consider Bandini to be my father's best work. Uh, you know, if he had lived, I think he would have, he was making a film called uh, Amrit Kung Ke Khoj Me that would have been probably superseded even Bandini. It was an amazing story by a Bengali writer, Shambhresh Bosh, a very political film. And my father had also dreamt of making Mahabharat at some point. And he had started doing the scripting. Actually, the scripting of uh, Amrit Kum was being done by Gulzar. Gulzar would have then entered the Bimalra productions. He really never did, uh, assisted my father except writing one song for Bandini. But he was on his way to becoming a uh, you know, uh, cherished member of the Bimal Roy family production house. Uh, so this, uh, my father passed away when he was 53 years old. I think that was his peak period. And Bandini remains a fabulously outstanding film. And I would say, you know, very poignant like Sujata. Uh, I'm, if you talk of Nutan's best works, when Nutan passed away, these two films were immediately shown, Sujata and Bandini. Sujata is supposed to be outstanding for her performance, outstanding. And it is also outstanding the way uh, Sunil Dutt has portrayed, uh, you know, the young man, very courageous, who wants to marry a Dalit girl and stands for his conviction. I mean, it's a brilliant. I mean, I don't think one comes out dry eyed after watching Sujata. You see everyone is moved to tears by watching this wonderful film, very, and it's also, it's, tra it's tragic on one side, but it's also very affirmative. I think my father's 
main thing was giving to the world a sense of you know affirmation of the human values and uh, i would say that some day uh, and and a new somebody makes an analysis which i think i may be right in saying that my father's uh, films uh, form uh, you know the best uh, best cultural values of india you cannot get more indian than my father and more real you know they're so rooted they're so focused on particularly on you know the intellectual class the indian middle class the values it his his work with some of the finest literature of from bengal and he never never left bengal in that sense you know he picked up sarat babu he picked up tagore he picked up uh, sujata bashuvat ghosh and then bandini is from the writing of jara sanjay it's a real life story of a woman prisna who had uh, who was forced to kill her poison her uh, lovers uh, her former lovers wife for betrayal and uh, it, it, i mean it's i think i would say my master talk will be useless unless you can watch these films again you should watch these films again and again to get the real essence of what the madurai is and please feel free to ask any questions i'll try my best to you know answer you to the best of my ability that's it you are so totally right about uh, sujata i still get the shivers when i hear that song uh, jalte hai jiske liye okay yeah. Paro, the other thing which i everybody can see behind me is the uh, is the historic stand of my father's camera uh -huh. uh, which is a michel camera it's an american camera and it needs about uh, you know four people to lift it i don't know how my father took it to shoot uh, madhumati in the hills in the hills yeah in the hills there was no transport no uh, you know you have to reach by means of transport like by road by train i don't know how he took it and the camera is sitting in my room right here lovely so that's uh, there was a question from the audience uh, why was your father so media unfriendly this was the industry where everyone was wanting to project themselves um, uh and he had all the pluses on his side why would you say what made him media unfriendly i use the word unfriendly because he was very shy he was genuinely a very private person for example i will give you an example like 12th of july is celebrated as my father's birthday this was not at all he 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 laughed at it you know it, it was picked up by screen uh, uh there's a there was used to be a publication called screen uh they you know they would discover the birthdays and the you know anniversaries so 1956 they issued say 12th july is bimal roy's birthday and since then people started sending him cakes and also one day he came and we were kids and i wrote about this uh, on this july uh, and we were so you know waiting for the chocolate cake to be eaten and my mother said no let your father come it's for him <laughs> So when he came, he took a look. He said, "Who sent this?" And it was sent by uh, the actor Raj Kumar, uh, who had sent saying, "Bimal, that you know, thank you or whatever." You know, he said, "Happy birthday." So my father laughed. He said, "Who said it's my birthday?" So see, that's the thing. We don't know. I mean, those days people had so many children, and there was no. I mean, I think uh, male children would still get a better off. But women, nobody kept count of their, you know, birthdays or things like that. So he came from that era, uh, that this thing. And the other thing is, my father came at the age of nineteen to Calcutta, penniless. I'm not joking. He was thrown out of his property by the uh, the manager, who told my father that you know your uh, that my grandfather had left a huge uh, debt. Either you pay it off or you leave. So my father had no money, and those days there was no money. I mean, you know, money in that sense was not available. And they were there. Uh, this, I've been to that uh, zamindari later. I was honored as a journalist by Bangladesh, so I went. It's now in Bangladesh, so I went to see that village. Beautiful village. It's lovely. It's full of you know rice fields and all. There's nothing left there, but you know they had that whole village was theirs. My father, grandfather's from you know they were like uh, rural zamindars. 
So my would also not knowing Hindi have played some role, some part in this staying away from the media business? Sorry. Would his not being very fluent in Hindi play some role in the not being India friendly? You think? Uh, could be, could be, because here in Bombay it was mainly Hindi and English, and my father was a pakka Bengali in that sense, in every sense, his dress sense, his uh, eating habits, uh, yes. theater, his literature, everything was. I mean, he was very close to people like Ravi Shankar, Uday Shankar, you know, people of that caliber. So he, he really, truly was a you know Bengali in that sense. That could be, but uh, you know, he was genuinely shy. He was very shy. I mean, if you see him, there are documentaries uh, which you might get on YouTube. You you will find that you know you, the shyness comes through. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, I'd say it adds charm to his personality, but he was shy. You mentioned that Madhumati was banned. What are the, what are your reasons why you think Madhumati was banned? Not banned in that sense. Madhumati was considered not a Bengal uh, Bimal Roy film. Typical uh, film and because it had you know a rebirth. It had ghosts. It, but you know the thing is, it was written by Ritwik Ghatak after all. You know it was written by Ritwik, my father's assistant, and Ritwik Ghatak boasted. He said, "Ha, I have written such a horrible story." This capitalist called Bimal Roy will be blown away. And it's it's settled our production house. To, till today, uh, Madhumati is the biggest earner of revenue for the songs. Oh my God. Oh, yes. There were 11 songs for the first time in a father's film, 11 songs in Madhumati. So uh, if, if the Sujata know. songs move you from inside, I think Madhumati makes you, makes you feel good and light, the yeah, songs yeah. of Madhumati. Yeah. And you know what? Everybody told my father, I said, Nay, Bimalda, uh, just don't take Salil Chaudhary. He's a flop, film, a flop music director. And my father had quietly gone and signed Salil Chaudhary and Shailendra. You know, there was a pact. And my father was extremely fond of Salil Chaudhary. He was such a talented man. Salil Chaudhary has not been given his due in India. He was a dramatist. He was, I mean, amazing, amazing composer. He, he is world class, I would say. World class, truly. You know, the background music of Madhumati should be on the disc because if it is like Beethoven, he used Mozart's, you know, I mean, in my book, there's a gentleman who's written about the Mozart's uh, influence on uh, Salil Chaudhary, particularly hearing the songs of uh, Madhumati. And he's taken songs from Romania. Dil Tarap Tarap is supposed to be a Dil Romanian. Tarap, yes, I remember. That's supposed to be a distinct from the Romanian, some Romanian folk song. So I would say my father was extremely innovative. Every film is different. See, I mean, what jar does Madhumati belong to? The others, you know, like, uh, I would say, okay, you can, uh, you know, and you, he never got typecast. He's not somebody who could say, okay, he, he can only direct uh, something like Dovi Gazemin, or he can only direct Sujata. No, every film is different. Every film is very, very different. You mentioned that not a single copy of Hamrahi remains. Is there any uh, uh, story or dialogues which are preserved, which can immortalize his memories? Not the, it was before my time. Huh? The other thing which I have to mention very proudly is that, you know, the theme, <laughs> music, the theme music of Udayar Pathe, was made in 1942, is Janagana Mana. So imagine when the film starts, everybody stands up. See, that's the kind of respect my father has created for himself. Who knew that this was going to be our national anthem in 1944? Mm -hmm. So he, my father was extremely fond of Tagore music. So there are two, three Tagore songs in Udhar Pathe, but the title music by R.C. Boral, who was the recipient of the first Falke Award, by the way, who gave the music for Udhar Pathe, is Janaganaman. It's, it's orchestration of Janaganaman. I mean, what, you know, what a vision, you just tell me that. It is, it is, uh, in, I would say in a sense, it is his visionary uh, creativity of my father. So that what made him, uh, you know, choose that music. I'm always cu been curious about what would have been Bimalda's uh, reaction to all the various art films which were very popular in the 70s. Uh, he would have been a bit disappointed because here is a man who never used gimmick in his films. Mm -hmm. Other films has completely no gimmick. There is nothing like, you know, uh, extraordinary, uh, what you say, special effects in his films. Whatever he could do is within the limits of black and white. 
and what camera can do. And he's done in, enormously. You know, he, he draws you into the film with the way he, he narrates it. So he would have been, because let's face it that, I mean, I work very closely with a lot of these new filmmakers, you know, all of them. In yes. fact, you know, I've been a secretary of MOOCs, we were, all of them were there. So they, they were, they were full of themselves. They wanted to break away. They were making a statement. So the gimmickiness is something my father would not have liked. He would not have approved of it. He would, he would of course, he, I mean, everybody, you know, uh, you know, right to do their own thing, but he would not have liked because he never used gimmick, never. We have somebody in the audience who's, an, who's a director in Mumbai. And he's been recently selected as a research scholar under Dr. Hubnath Pandey in Mumbai University. And he's chosen to do his research on Bimalda. Well, and you, uh, he wants well, to know if he can get in touch with you. So with your permission, maybe give him your course. email address. Absolutely, absolutely. I was going to say, I would like some youngsters to do a PhD on my father. I so we'll, we'll share the email address with sure, you. Do that. Uh, Shankar wants to know, what is the one most important quality which an actor must have so that a director can pick him up. How would your father have reacted to, reacted to this question? It's very difficult to say. Again, he would look for people who are natural, natural. naturally. See, what Satyajit Rai said, I mean, I couldn't put it better. He said, my father introduced acting which is wholly suited to the cinema media. Till then, it was only, you know, what, what did we have? We had stage theater, we had Jatra, we had Parsi theater. Yeah. The theatrical tradition in cinema was also, was drawn from those elements. So my father just threw those away. In fact, Satyajit Rai said he threw away the cobwebs of in, uh, theatrical acting. So he brought in acting, which is, you see Sujata today. Nobody's speaking, nobody's, you know, nobody's declaiming, nobody's shouting. There is melodrama in that. There is the melodramatic situation of the blood transfusion. Lord yes. found it very melodramatic. Okay. But that was to drive a point home. That your blood, you know, it, it's such an irony that finally the blood which suits that woman is the blood of the Dalit girl. Yes. That's a reality. That's a reality. So I would say even though there were melodramatic moments, melodramatic situation, Acting never got melodramatic in my father's films. Speaking of act actors and acting, what made Bimalda pick uh, Balrat Sani for that very, very iconic role in Dobi Gazami? Yes, there is a beautiful writing in my book. I think part of the time you read my book by Balrat Sahani. Uh, my father was looking for an actor and he happened to have gone to the set where Balrat Sahani was acting in a film where he was also playing a peasant. So he saw Balraj Ji for just a few minutes and then he came back and he took it. You know, Balraj Sahani was extremely sophisticated. He was an English pro lecturer in Shanti. Yes. Yes. And he had come back from London. He was, you know, he was always in Western clothes, he had a very sophisticated Western appeal. But he, and again, what I'm talking of, he never showed Balraj Ji the acting. Balraji did that all by himself. He went to Calcutta. The entire film was shot in Calcutta outdoor. The Vigaja I mean, is actually uh, the French name is Calcutta Cruel City. The title of the fr French uh, I Amin mean, is Calcutta Cru uh, Will Cruel. Okay, so it was shot in Calcutta. And when the sh film was shooting, Balraji would run barefoot on hot roads to feel what it is like. What it is like. You know to get the act you know to get that re realistic thing so these are things i've heard uh, but you know uh, I, and he did that he made i mean extraordinary work what extraordinary work is put in and uh, there's one particular scene in which he he mentioned that in that uh, you know I, I discovered this piece in london uh, written by valra sahani and it was published in some uh, article which i uh, included in my book who should read that it's an extraordinary piece how he acted, yeah. So music we know plays a very important role in most of his films, whether you talk about the melodies of Madhumati or the, the brooding music of Bandini and Sujata. Right. Uh, how, how did your father react to music as a genre? Did he, look up, did he look upon it as something that has to be there? How important was it in his films basically is the question. Was, it, I think he, he knew that music played a big role in his films, he did. 
and he was uh, you know very intuitive about music mm -hmm. intuitive about how and uh, i mean this again i've heard and i think this is a true story when devdas was ready devdas was going in for its final uh, re, you know the final uh, thing of a film is re-recording when you, re you bring in all the uh, you know the cinema the sound the sound effect and you put it together and make one whole you know composite thing that's called re-recording when the film was going in for re-recording um sd barman who gave the music devdas is not known for its music by the way you know one or two beautiful songs are there mitwa is a lovely song mitwa yeah beautiful song very moody song so sd barman went to my father and said uh, vimalda uh, i can't do the background my father said what are you talking about he said no he drove my father out of his house at 10 o'clock in the night and both of them went and went to visit uh, salil choudhury and woke him up and said salil is the only person who can give the background of devdas and this is salil choudhury has given the background of devdas yeah. he said yes on one condition i will not take the credits i mean look at the largeness of this thing look at the generosity of spirit he said i will do it yes if you and salil choudhury was known for his background music like his son today sanjay choudhury is known for his background you know he's got that from his father so it's it, this is these are stories which you know i mean uh, i can tell you lots of stories like this about my father and the way so, he inspired people yeah so kalpa wants to know which are the two most commercially successfully successful films of vimalda uh i would say sujata madhumati uh, bandini um, yeah sujata madhumati bandini commercial in what sense how how much it ran i guess she's asking about how much money it made how much it ran that i would say is first film udai pote nobody has even reached that kind of a success it was the most successful film i said 60 lakhs in 1940 correct 60 lakh tell me how much is 60, uh, 60 lakhs in today's terms <laughs> i can easily add one crore one zero or maybe one and a half zeros and tell you yeah, so what i'm saying is yeah that was his most successful film and from that's the rise of him that's the rise of him yeah i mean most of his films are very watchable people swear by his devdas nobody has seen a better devdas you know i mean people when people talk of devdas they talk mainly about my father not sanjay leela bhansali not uh, the other one which was made called dev d it is my you know father dev my father shot the earlier devdas okay yes he was behind the camera uh, he was the main dop for the cycle devdas so he seen he was obsessed with making that film and my father was a tea totaler he never drank i don't know why he was so obsessed maybe you know the intensity of the love story intensity you know the quality you get in devdas it's it's unbearably intense even so today, i have two tricky questions for you what your, what would your father said about the new of new version of devdas and what do you <laughs> think about the new version of devdas which new one sanjay leela bansalis <laughs> or the other one i loved uh, devdi i loved it i think it's a beautiful image very well i like abhay is superb and it's very modern it's a modern take on devdas you can't get away from the fact that it is devdas story there are two women and this man who can't, he's indecisive you know the man's character is totally he cannot make decisions in his correct life. that's the whole thing uh, i think my father would have walked out from some days <laughs> absolutely uh, do you see any of today's directors in the mold of bimalda no. he was unique he was he, unique. he was he was really unique he, and he's he knew every every aspect of filmmaking imagine the those days there was no film school where did he learn his art and craft from there are things like you know people can pick up a bimal roy frame you know there is a very uh, talented music uh, uh, composer called uh, tushar bharti actually you should call him for a chat i i would like you to call him for the music of my father's film he is brilliant you know he says uh, rinkidi there are i can see bimal roy frames the way my father composed uh, it, it was unique you know no none, no other dop could do that he would always be the final frame would be my father's you know and what i'm saying is farooq understand there's no no gimmickery in my father's 
which is what has made them timeless. I'm maybe I'm shooting my mouth, but you know, I saw recently I saw Piyasa, Guru Dutch. Mm. Outstanding film, it's iconic film. I couldn't bear it. It has, it has, it has, it has, uh, it has uh, what shall I say, dated because of the acting. Completely dated. You cannot ever say a Bimal Rai film will be dated. As long as cinema is there, and I mean, these are textbooks of film. These are textbooks. And my father was the best editor. I mean, he might have taken Rishikesh Mukherjee or whoever. It, he was the final editor. It's, you know, you make a film on the editing table. I mean, I'm also a documentary filmmaker. I know how important editing is. Editing makes or mars a film. You know, so he knew all the aspects of cinema, music, acting, you know, everything. And he could inspire his actors to put in their best. People would die to work with my father. Madhuwala, for example, you know, she came, she again and again, so many times, you know, she didn't have the guts to reach my father, but she reached my father's friend, Hiten Choudhury, saying, uh, Hituda, please tell Dada to take me. I will work with one rupee. I mean, this is so inspired because they knew if they worked in a... What a great man he was, yeah. That, the inspirational quality, people wanted to do their best. And these are... Mark. I'm talking of iconic actors, you know? Correct. Like Dilip Kumar. I mean, he, he would have given us anything, whatever my father asked. They had fantastic rapport. What about Kumbh Mela? Uh, somebody is in the audience says that she found the she found seventy eight minutes of the footage on a website. Yes. Why was and it the lost? Film, that was the film my father was making, his last film called Amrit Kumbh. It was uh, from a major uh, accident which took place uh, in Kumbh. You know there are a lot of these tragedies. It was written uh, by. It, it's from the perspective of a journalist who goes uh, to this, to find out what happened actually. Uh, that how, what, how did the tragedy occur? You know, why did the, those uh, elephants go berserk, you know? So it's written, it's a journey. And that would, uh, was going to be my father's uh, you know, film, which he was currently working when he passed away. And so she... was, we'd bring the script uh, of the film, yeah. Shripad wants to know if you contributed towards any of his productions. Good question. Yes, I did. I did. I did. I, I recorded the bird sounds uh, in Sujata, which is throughout. It's a, a track of, you know, you hear the kakus. You know, it's a very lovely sound of the, you know, when they're meeting in the garden. There's a lot of birds, bird, you can hear bird calls. So I recorded that from our garden in Bandra, and my father actually used it. Godiwala That's right. That's right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. So the lots of compliments which are coming in about how eye-opening this was. Uh, oh, Akshay yes. More says being a nineteen nineties. I, 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 I said this is this is you know I would say poetic injustice. I mean I can't fit in my father into a close one hour. You have to you know watch his films. Let's make that possible sometime. You know as soon as yes. things come up, yeah. We have ideas about uh, showing some of these classics in our Khaki lab. Yes, do that. Do when that. When the when things Which open up. I was up. talking about it. I mean, that would be wonderful. You should do that. You know, really, you need to watch uh, his films, and I'm I'm positive your um, audience would love. I mean, you know, I'll give you my own example of I showed uh, two films I I took abroad. One was Sujata for a festival in Pesaro, which is the Italian uh, thing. Uh, it, what is it called? Sea seaside Town. They used to have a festival there, uh, a Pizarro festival. So they had one Ital uh, Indian uh, chapter, which they selected only Sujata. I was a bit, you know, skeptical. I said, Sujata, caste system, what would Italians understand, you know? And so I was sitting outside because I've seen the film the Hazard number of times. I was sitting outside. Everyone came out crying. Italian audience. They're watching the film, they're reading the subtitles. I realize that it much goes beyond, you know, it goes beyond the caste system. Sujata is a story of a woman who's been completely rejected as a human being. It's not just caste. The sense of rejection that, you know, she's long, she longs to belong to that family. And she's getting this jhatka all the time, you know. So that we all have gone through, some kind of rejection or the other. 
So that is what came through. And I was really amazed. It was an eye-opening thing for me. And then again, I would say, uh, I showed Devdas. There was another festival in, uh, in Rome in which they selected Devdas. No one asked me about Dilip Kumar. Everyone asked me about Motilal. They said, where is this actor? He should be in Hollywood. I mean, what a performance Motilal has given. Jackie Shroff doesn't even come anywhere. Doesn't come close. Doesn't come close. Ah, yeah, Motilal's character in this film is superb. You know, so uh, I mean, you need foreigners, you need the Western world. Fortunately, I am I think I'm able, going to be able to show my father's films uh, to the Western world. We're trying to restore his films. And anybody, any ideas, anyone wants to, you know, share any ideas or, you know, help me raise funds. I am just looking to do, restore my father's films. It's time. So, which brings me to the next question. Uh, Meera Desai wants to know where she can see some of these classics. Uh, does she have a DVD? This thing, I can lend her my DVDs. Okay. Who's this? Meera Desai. She's a regular at our uh, okay. talks. Okay. Uh, people want you to comment on Benazir and Parak specifically. Yes. Parak is again a very understated. It's my father's most political film. It was inspired by Mark Twain, uh, the American writer, from a story called The Man Who uh, Corrupted Hadleyburg. It's about corruption, how, you know, gradually corruption seeps in to the system. And it's a brilliant film. Unfortunately, it coincided with the release of Mughal Azam. You know, Mughal Azam, I mean, Farooq, I don't know, you're too far too young. Mughal Azam- No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Mughal Azam's print was sent to Marana on an elephant on, on uh, this thing on uh, elephant backs. And here was this poor film called Parak, you know, released somewhere close to that Maratha Mandir. Who is going to see Parak when you are releasing that film? So it got mar. You know, this is what used to happen also. <clears throat> you know, the wrong choice of uh, timing, the wrong choice of distribution. So it, it's a brilliant film. Absolutely, totally brilliant, I would say. Uh, Benazir was not directed by my father. Benazir was directed by one of his assistants. Uh, it was a Muslim social. Uh, I think my father, you know, he, he tried to help this assistant of his. My father would do these things. I, I mean, he's helped all his assistants to make films like Amanat, Parivar, all from Premanra Productions, all directed by his uh, assistants, including Benazir. So that is the tool. I'm not very familiar with the film, but it's got some nice songs by Esteban. So two people have offered two suggestions on who could possibly step into Bimaldas' shoes. Yeah. One suggestion is Vishal Bardwaj and one is Gulzar. What are your thoughts on these two names? Not at all. Gulzar is a hopeless filmmaker. He's not at all a filmmaker. I mean, look at his films. They get worse and worse. He's not a filmmaker. And also, I mean, someday I will refute his this thing, say he was never my father's assistant. He was beginning to be with this kumb thing. He was beginning to write the script and coming closer to one. By, by then, my father was very ill and completely dependent on you know his assistance, and he had he was uh, you know bedridden. Uh, Vishal, yeah, but Vishal's films are also very different. I don't think anybody can step into my. I'm sorry, nobody can step in. Not even Satyajit Ray. I mean, they're class apart. Uh, I would say. One person who was very close to my father's ideology is Tapan Sinha in Bengal. Tapan. Tapan Sinha. I mean, absolutely. The films is made so, so close to the ideology of my father. And he was also my father's sound recordist, by the way. So they all come from the same stream of thought, you know. Tapan Sinha was closest to my father in his ideology. There are many comments from people who've watched Sujata, Bandini, and how they were moved by it. Can they, you can share my email with them happily. <laughs> they can send me. I'll be very happy to sit and chat, have a real chat. I mean, you know, come home, have shy, and then chat. Yeah. So what, can we read some of the comments? What? Uh, we'll send them across to you. There are so many of them. I can't possibly be reading them. I'd rather focus on asking you questions and making your, using your time productively. Of course. Anytime, tell me, what else? Uh, so many thank yous, I just need to scroll. 
why are Bimal Roy movies not in the Criterion collection? Should be selected by them for restoration. Keep your fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed. So that means you are working on that. That's what I said on restoration. Yeah. It's very expensive. Farooq, I don't have. Personally, I probably would leave everything what I have for my father's this thing. I want to see it in my lifetime to see them, you know, restored because see when they were made and the way, you know, uh, I'm not even very happy with the National Film Archive. You know, they have, you know, got that huge place, a lovely place, but, you know, there's no attention given. To it's it. sad that they don't have India's first ever talkie movie in their archives. They don't have so many films in their archives, so many films, you know. They, you know, I mean, ask her, I mean, Shivendra is helping me. You know, Shivendra is the person who's really told me that so many of the silent films have just perished. See, because of the, the cellular that we have now, they don't have even, I mean, whatever whatever new format you have, they're also not long lasting. And technology is changing like madly every day. I mean, I can't keep track. Today you find this uh, format, tomorrow you find this format. It's very difficult to keep track, you know. So we are still trying. And I hope it will be possible. Amresh Chakravarti says a lot of Bimal Das films are available in Geo Cinema. What are the, what for example, which ones? We'll ask him separately. Sure. Then do give him my contact. Yes. Uh, he's the one who's writing on Baba. No, that's a separate individual. We'll give them both the. Sure. the... Yeah. I would love to see uh, if we can discover my father's. Magnificent satire called Montro Mugdo that was in Bengali, only Bengali, if we can get a copy. I've not seen a greater satire on uh, on uh, Indian this thing for rituals. It's a biting satire. I mean, it, it's before its time. And I you know I've got so many queries about where is that film? Can we watch the film from eminent, you know, people like, um, you know, um, uh, 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 this thing from uh, writers and all. It was written by Banapur, who is one of uh, the finest writers in Bengal, and it's called Mantra Mukt. It is a brilliant, brilliant satire. I mean, it, it's you can't get more bitter about the Indian society's obsession of, you know, conducting rituals of superstition, superstition behavior. It's a fantastic film, and there's no trace of that film. So there are lots of people asking for your email address. So I'm going to request Diksha to put it in this Absolutely. chat box, as, uh, as many of them have been requesting. This is, see, I, I'm here because see, my father is not just Bimal Roy. My father is my guru, my mentor. Whatever I've learned, my own, my own values are all from my father. So, you know, I owe it to him. And, you know, as long as I'm alive, I'm ready to do master classes. I mean, you have to call it mistress classes. <laughs> or whatever yeah and show his films and love to watch them with people uh, listen to the music of his films uh, fortunately i have most of the dvds on dvd format so we can watch them so i think as an accountant i would like to know how many films are uh, directed by baba just to wrap it up just to wrap up everything ah uh, how many films yeah i did have a count from bengal uh, as a director you mean yes from udar pathe in Calcutta, new theatres he made, Udar Pathe was made twice, Anjangar was made twice, that's four. Then he made Mantra Mugdha, then he made a film called uh, 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 Pahela Admi, which was his last exit from uh, this thing. So there were six films in Calcutta. Then here he started with Ma. And then the scroll on, you rename Ma, Bab Beti, Dobiga uh, Jamin, uh, Nokri. I mean, quite, I mean, I don't think, you know, I'm not saying this because he's my father. I don't think any other director enjoy the privilege of being liked for so many films. You know, you know Mehbub Saab for his mother in law You know Kiyasi for his Mogulazi. You know Gurudat for his Piyasa. Look at the amount of titles who come up with my father's. And that also so many have not seen Parak. Parak is one of his most brilliant films. You know, you start from Dobiga Zemin onwards, na? So Dobiga Zemin was a you know, landmark film for India. It brought, as I told you, it, it was the first uh, uh, 
uh, it got the award at Khan after so many years in 48 Chetanana's uh, Nichanagar went. Nichanagar. Nichanagar. And then Govi Gajanan. Much before Satyajit Ray. Satyajit Ray, when my father announced his second film, after he watched uh, Udar Pathe, my father, there was some media, of course, there. So my father, uh, this thing, uh, just from this number, my father made, uh, uh, announced his next film called Anjangar, which was again as absolute money. He really attacked the feudal system. The other thing which I would like to say, since I'm talking of feudalism, see, my father came from a feudal background, Zamindar, landed, you know. In his films, he really, really took a stand against the enemy class. All his films, whether it is Oviga Jamin or whether it is uh, Anjangar, he was completely against the this thing, against uh, Jamin Dari. So when my father announced making a uh, from a short story called Fossil, Satyajit Roy was a, a commercial artist at the time with a very eminent ad agency called, uh, and I'll get the name in a minute. He wrote the entire screenplay of Fossil and he went to meet my father. This is the kind of inspiration Udayar Pathe made. He, he wrote it. My father didn't have time to meet him. But you know, this is how he inspired me. Okay. Uh, did, did your father ever talk about having a favorite actor? He never talked. <laughs> my first book was called The Man of Silence. <laughs> he never he never talked. No. But I know my father was very fond of Dilip Kumar. Of course, Dilip Kumar would put into certain roles. And usually the practice of Bimal Roy production was to sign artists for two films, like he did for, for Bandini and Sujata. He signed Nutan. He signed uh, Sunil Dutt also for two films. So, uh, he signed him for uh, the other film, which was directed by my father's assistant called Mani Bhattacharya. Um, for Sunil that for two films, he used to do that. But he had some very favorite uh, character artists. He brought them from, uh, I mean, he brought them from Bengal. I mean, he Jatip brought- was one. No, he brought Suchitra Sen for Devdas. Suchitra Sen. First film, her entry into, she never really yes. put it in uh, in this cinema, but her first film entry was here. He That's brought, another underrated actress. I uh, I mean, everyone raves about Madhumati. I can as Suchitra said back then as the, the Venus of Indian cinema. People may agree or not. For which? For uh, Devdas? For Devdas, for uh, Bombay Ka Babu. Yes. Oh, she's not underrated. She was not, you know, unfortunately, she was not given the Falke award because she refused to go to Delhi. They should have brought it home for her. She deserved it. Amazing actress. And she was related to us, you know. Her father-in-law was my, my fa married to my father's eldest sister. Okay. So when my aunt died in childbirth, he remarried, and the son from that marriage uh, is married to Chichita okay. So they were quite close relations. Okay. And one final question. Sure. Did your father talk about any idols as far as films are concerned? Talk Who did any... he look up to? Who did he look up to for inspiration, so to speak? Russian cinema. He saw uh, Battleship Potemkin, which is a silent film, every day of his life. And we were mad at him, which was a hor horrendous film for us to watch as kids. He had got a copy of it, I don't know from where, and he had uh, bought a 16 millimeter projector from you know the disposal of the army. Every evening he came back and unfailingly he would change and sit and watch. <laughs> I mentioned this in my, you know, this thing in my introduction. So we grew up watching Russian films, uh, you know, and by my father watched them. And, and people, I mean, Sham talks about the Russian angle in my father's film. But one particular film called Viraj Bahu, which was also not my father's production. He has talked about my father using the... He discovered as a filmmaker, Sham said that, you know, he was very influenced by the lighting of the camera. Because, you know, the Russians are the... Russians wrote the grammar of cinema. Right? It is Eisenstein who wrote the grammar of cinema. Hmm. So my father couldn't have had a better master than Eisenstein. So that was his grammar. He learned grammar from the Russian cinema. And that's why perhaps Dobrikin was picked up in uh, Moscow so much, you know, so, so well beloved. You know? 
Thank you, Rinki ji, so much. You're going to get a lot of emails from a lot of interested people who want to know more. You have kindly offered to give your email and it's there in the chat group. So uh, you can expect emails from uh, the researcher. Second, second share also... my, my WhatsApp and my this thing. I will be very happy to talk to you. Anything. And there's also somebody who was involved in promoting a film festival in, uh, in the US. She said that uh, it should be there in the next uh, retrospective section of the film uh, festival that she's involved with. Her name is Kalpa, just, just for your information when she writes to you. Okay, which, which part of America? Kalpa, can you, could you put that down in the chat box? She'll write to you, I guess. All thank right. you so much. For thank you, Faro. Thank you. And I have to thank Suresh, who has always been such a support. You know, thank I you, Suresh Ji. Yes, thank you very much. And keep it up, okay? Thank you. Bye, we hope to do a, a regular film screening in Khaki Lab very soon. Please do. Please do. I will, I, will, I will curate it for you. I'll thank you, everybody, for attending. Okay. And do keep attending all our Saturday talks and our workshops. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, bye. Bye.